Hi there, and welcome to the program, Agriculture on the Move. I am Philip Sidney. The Ministry of Agriculture, Food Production, Fisheries, and Rural Development, in collaboration with the Pesticides and Toxic Chemical Control Board, is observing Pesticides Awareness Week, which started on the 22nd of September and ends on the 28th, under the theme, Storewise, save lives. As we all know, chemicals or pesticides have many, many advantages, but then if not used carefully and safely, can have serious effect to human lives. To discuss this topic today in studio is, to my immediate right, is Mr. De Costa Pierre, who is the manager of the Garden Center at the Renical Company. Ms. Donnellyn Charles, who is an officer attached to the Ministry of Sustainable Development and the Environment. And Mr. Winston Elliott, who is attached to the Ministry of Agriculture, of course, attached to the Research Division. Welcome, people, to the program. Thank you. Thank Thank you. you. Ms. Charles, since you are a board member, I think the public needs to know, you know, what is the pesticide boards a mandate, you know, uh, as a regulatory body. Can you give us a brief overview? Yeah, very briefly, the overall job of the, the Pesticide and Toxic Chemicals Control Board is to facilitate the importation of pesticides and chemicals into St. Lucia. Um, the board reviews all applications for chemicals and pesticides before they're imported. The importer has to submit an application. We review that application and make a determination as to whether or not this pesticide or chemical can be allowed into St. Lucia. And that is based on various factors, environmental factors, health factors. So essentially the board serves as a safeguard for St. Lucia to ensure that whatever comes in are substances that we can deal with, we can manage. Okay. Yes. Um, the composition of the body would like to say, who, I mean, how many members of the board? Yes. The board comprises of persons from the private sector, from the Ministry of Agriculture. We also have persons that are from the medical field that can serve as a, for, for medical purposes as a guiding role. And we also have somebody from the Ministry of, of Health that is um, to also, no, let's get, that, that is also tells us about the, also guides us on the environment uh, that makes a part of the board. Okay. Um, since we're dealing with the theme, uh, Storewise, Steve's Lives, um, how did that whole week of activity come about? How you came about with that theme? Firstly, I think it's important to highlight what are pesticides and pesticides are substances that are used in controlling pest and diseases. Farmers use them, we also use them in our households for controlling ants, uh, roaches, uh, mosquitoes and it is really important to highlight that while they are very, um, we use them, they are beneficial to us but if pesticides are not used properly they can also have uh, severe impacts on our health mm -hmm. and the environment. Mm -hmm. The pesticide week came about from the grouping of pesticide body. There's a coordinating group of pesticides boards throughout the region for countries from CARICOM and they meet on a yearly basis and decide on a topic that is in the interest of people that pe pesticide users mm -hmm. and that is how the topic came about. Every year there's a different topic that is suited to the present environment. Like um, last year, we had something on obsolete pesticides when we had an, an ongoing project. That is how it came about. 
Mr. DeCosta, uh, I know you've been involved uh, with the record company at the, the sale of chemicals to the public. Yes. Um, your day-to-day -day routine, interacting with the public, you know, uh, how have you over the years that impacted on, on you, the company? Um, in terms of our, my day-to-day -day routine, uh, Renegan Company or pesticide importers um, have a great role to play in the whole scheme of pesticide. For one, the pesticides are brought in to target particular pests. Mm -hmm. We at um, Renegan Company would, lead, well, our core part of the business is with dealing with farmers and in, in, in terms of recommending or, or importing an insecticide or fungicide, whatever form of pesticide it is, we would ensure that we comply with the Ministry of Agriculture or the Pesticide Board Regulation by ensuring that the product is registered and it is suitable for use for the, for the use in agriculture or use to control a particular pest. In addition to that, um, we would ensure that um, the farmer understands the nature of that particular pesticide and that we would assist him in diagnosing his problem by making the proper recommendation for whatever the problem is. So if a farmer comes to you and he says, okay, I have um, released his problem to you, um, are you able to diagnose and know for a fact that he's saying exactly what he wants to say? No, in some cases the farmer may not know exactly what the problem is. We, in some cases, well, we, there, we, we would liaise with extension officers from the Ministry of Agriculture we, that, that is within close proximity, or we have an extension officer in-house which would go to the fields and, and also make, observe and make recommendation but there are times based on what the, the individual says to you, you can make an informed decision and, and make a recommendation for them. Do you all have, um, after that an interaction with the farmer, I mean, do you all go out on the field, I mean, you all go out on the field at all? Yes, we have, we have a field officer who is out in the field and serves the entire island. Great. Yeah. Um, Ms. Charles, as far as, you know, the suppliers are concerned, do you all have, see, um, regular checks on them in terms of maybe going to their, um, their place of storage to ensure that everything is taught properly? I, I don't know, I'm just asking. Maybe yeah. you are I will allow Mr. Yeah. Elliot <laughs> to okay, give that information. We, we have an, an active inspectorate in, in the ministry where that there's a list of registered products that are allowed into the country. So we do periodic checks. We also meet with farmers and also ensure that what the pesticides that are at the different stores, the different outlets that sell those products that they are registered. Uh, there are instances that there are challenges that occur because persons may try to bring in products that are not registered. But uh, the point I'm making is that if, for example, um, at, at a radical company, um, do you go in there and have to inspect how those chemicals are stored? Uh, you know, so that in terms of their workers, are they well protected? Part of our duties ensure, part of our duties as um, the inspectorate of the Ministry of Agriculture, we carry out that function to ensure that products are properly stored, products are that people have suitable clothing, the persons that are working in those places. Uh, the places it's important that there's proper aeration. It's also really significant to highlight that the products should not be in direct sunlight. Mm. And also, uh, the other safety feature that, we, that is really important that we need to ensure that these pesticides are not stored close to water sources. If in the event that there is um, a pollution or if one of the containers um, had to be um, um, toppled over or if, if, if there's some damage, okay. it's really important. Okay. We are due for a break. Uh, we are moving very quickly because that uh, topic is very, very interesting and sensitive. So, hold on, we'll be right back. Our agriculture can be threatened when persons or travelers bring with them foreign plants or animals into our country. Please check with the Crop Protection Unit at telephone number 468 5601 or 
450-2375 or the Veterinary Services Division at 468-5621 who will advise you as to what is allowed into the country. Welcome back to the program, Agriculture on the Move. We are discussing the safe use of pesticides. Uh, Mr. Costa, based on what Mr. Ellis was said earlier on, you want to expound on something? Yeah, we would just like to encourage um, persons who are purchasing pesticides to ensure that it is the, all, whatever the pesticide is, ensure that it's properly labeled mm -hmm. and you are able to see directions or guidelines for usage. If it's not labeled properly, do not buy it. And that is, that is very important. So, but, but are you all, are you all a drilling company um, for the lemon out there, okay? Um, sometimes a, a number of the farmers can really cannot read properly. Um, how do you ensure that they have gotten the directions of using those chemicals safely? Well, it is our responsibility to, to um, communicate with the farmer, whether it be in English or in Creole, mm -hmm. to, especially when it comes to calibration and to break down um, the rates of application. Um, a farmer may tell you um, a tablespoon, mm -hmm. and whereas um, you, the, the information on there is the rate per acre. Mm -hmm. So we would be able to calculate it for the farmer That's and important. simplify it, basically. Yeah, because you need to simplify it. Because yes. a lot of these recommendations are done on a per acre basis. That's right. You know, and, and you need to simplify it. Yes. Okay? Um, you talk about some guidelines a while ago. Yeah, the uh, Ministry of Sustainable Development uh, energy science and technology through the environment division recently well is preparing to complete a project that was funded by the United Nations Environment Program mm -hmm. and one of the outputs of the project is developing guidelines for the the use handling storage and transportation mm -hmm. of chemicals which would include pesticides and toxic chemicals mm -hmm. and the idea is that the end result would be something that any normal person could pick up and read so it would tell them you know don't store next to food as Elliot said earlier and ensure that you know you use the correct application rates etc so we're hoping that very soon we can distribute that through the Ministry of Agriculture to um, the farmers extension workers and even to the to Reinrich and company and other companies <laughs> importers <laughs> that um, distribute chemicals but regarding the use of, of, of chemicals it's very important that um, people understand the um, the problems they could end up with if they don't use the, per, the proper co, uh, application mm -hmm. amounts. For example, I was using concrete cleaner not long ago, and I've been using this for a while, and I've never read the label. Never. I just put it in a bucket of water, and I drop it on the concrete, and I come back. I've never read the label. And when I read the label, it said, do not dilute. Use <laughs> do not dilute, use directly on the concrete, leave for an hour, and then you come back. And I have been slaving over this yeah. thing and wondering why it's not working. you. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So I could imagine there could be a number of examples of people using too much chemical, too yeah. little because chemical, right. not protecting themselves, right. your that's fingers, right. your that's eyes, right. your that's face. Right. Right. But, yes. but there's something else. Mm -hmm. Before you go into that, um, I, I, I want to challenge you on this, the board. Mm -hmm. I mean, why is it, maybe a level for you can't tell me, why mm -hmm. is it is only once a year you hear this media bliss mm -hmm. about, about pesticides? You know, I'm not seeing it, you know, on a regular basis mm -hmm. in terms of in your face. Uh, mm -hmm. in terms of the safety use of it because mm -hmm. people are still not aware of the dangers of use of chemicals in this country. You know? Why I concur with your statement, Mr. Sidney, mm -hmm. but there's a lot of work going on in the background in terms of like the ministry, we meet with farmers, we meet with pesticide suppliers, we have regular meetings at the schools and we always inform people. But it is true that there is need for heightened awareness. Yes. And it should yeah. not always be at one week of yeah. the day because pesticides are toxic and especially if not used properly. Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, because the thing you talk about is you are working in the background, but yes. you're working in the background. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yes, I mean true. Yeah. True. it was such an important, you know, yeah. topic. You all need to get the public aware. Because trust me, when you talk about the farmers who are using chemicals on our foods that we eat. Mm -hmm. Some farmers have this thing about, you know, uh, if you tell them to use one tablespoon, right, they figure, boy, that's not strong enough. Yeah. And, and they, they put, put more. Then they put it, mm -hmm. uh, or, or 
the reverse because it's a very expensive chemical and you want to stretch it. Mm -hmm. Then, of course, you know, it's, the, the, too, weak, the, then it's you too weak, resistance. then you have resistance to the right. disease and stuff like that. So, you know, there are lots of challenges out there. So, I don't yeah. know uh, how... Yeah. But why do you say that? One of the points that I would really like to highlight is it's always very important when purchasing any pesticide, any chemical that we use in our household, that there's a proper label mm -hmm. and we read and follow the instructions on labels. Mm -hmm. And there are a number of challenges that can occur if we do not follow the instructions on labels because the labels give us an indication as to what is the rate of application, when is the best time to apply, um, what, how it should be stored properly, and it gives us an idea of the expiry date, it gives us the active ingredient. Mm -hmm. It is also extremely important that we follow the recommended rates because, like I mentioned earlier, that pesticides, while they are beneficial, they can also be very toxic if not used properly. If the pesticides are not used properly, what can happen is that there may be a time that while you're using it, you might realize that it might not be effective, mm -hmm. and that is because you do not use adequate or sometimes many persons uh, might want to use more than the recommended dose. Mm -hmm. So it's always important to read the label and follow those instructions in terms of safety. Mm -hmm. One of the other key things that the label highlights is what we do in case of accidental poisoning, mm -hmm. overdose, it, that is something that is also extremely important. Mm -hmm. So it is key that we always follow the instructions on the label, and when pesticides are stored, they should be stored away from children, mm -hmm. a way that is easily access, um, somewhere that is not easy accessible, that children can just go and access it. Mm -hmm. Pesticides should never be stored in soft drink containers mm -hmm. or other containers. They should always have their original labels on them. These are some of the things that are extremely important in terms of pesticide storage. Yeah. Yeah. That, that information on the label is so critical um, in that the label will tell you what form the product is in, That's right. if it is ready to use or if it is a concentrate. Someone may purchase a ready to use item and dilute it and a week down the line say it's not working, mm -hmm. but it's already diluted, it's ready to use. Mm -hmm. So it's important, again, and we emphasize the importance of reading the label and ensure that products purchased are properly labeled at all times. But because let me ask you a question. I always had that thing in mind, you know. I mean, you come into your garden center. Right? Yes. It's air conditioned, okay? There are chemicals on the shelves, mm -hmm. all right? When you come in, you take a certain scent, you know, a certain smell, a certain aroma. Yes. All right? Now that stays in there. How dangerous is this to human health, being in that environment on a daily basis? Okay, the area is a condition, but it, there, there are also extract the funds as well mm. within the premises. That's why Mr. Elliot made mention of um, ventilation. Mm -hmm. There are extract the funds as well. But more so with regards to health, we always employ that, um, we always encourage employees or persons who work with chemicals mm -hmm. to do periodical medical che mm -hmm. checks. Mm -hmm. Ensure that you know you go to the doctor at least once or twice a year mm -hmm. to um, ensure that your, your, your health is in good standing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But then, but then you, you also have any, any, any special I mean, uh, wear in, in there, I mean, for protective wear? I mean, yeah, there I, are pro I notice you all just wear your normal clothes. Yeah, our normal clothes. But if individuals are going to deal with um, damage or, or you're going to be in direct contact with um, some spillage of chemical, mm -hmm. then you're going to put on protective gear. Mm -hmm. But if the product is, is, is properly, the products come in, they're properly sealed. Mm -hmm. The smell that you would take in most cases is re in relation to the nature of the product. For example... Oh, that's, that point, yeah. we had so when I come back, I want yes. to ask <laughs> Ms. Charles a uh, serious question there. Sure. You will do for a break, we'll be right back. Pesticides and Toxic Chemicals Control Board reminds all importers of such chemicals that according to the Pesticides and Toxic Chemicals Act, only chemicals which have been registered and granted approval by the board can be legally imported for use in Sindusha. Agricultural and household chemicals that are not licensed for use in Sindusha can be harmful to its users and the general public. 
Before placing orders, importers are advised to check the approved list of pesticides or household chemicals to ensure that they can be legally imported. An import license must be obtained from the Research and Development Division of the Ministry of Agriculture and must be submitted to the Customs and Excise Department to facilitate the clearance of the consignment. For further information, contact the Ministry of Agriculture's Research Division at Union or call telephone numbers 468-5600 or 468-5602. Welcome back to the program, Agriculture on the Move. Um, Mr. Charles, as far as your minister's concerned, I, I, I need to find out exactly, mm -hmm. you know, how are you all directly involved mm -hmm. in the whole stream of things? Okay, in terms of chemicals management, chemicals come into play when we talk about health and safety for human beings mm -hmm. and for the environment. Okay. Chemicals are all around us and they're not only restricted to pesticides that farmers use mm -hmm. or what we may use to kill a cockroach. Mm -hmm. Um, chemicals are in our plastic cups. That's why now you get various grades of plastics, those that are safer to use than others, and they recommend don't use a plastic in a microwave. Um, pesticides are in our face wash, in our body lotions, in our detergents. The clothing we wear contain plastics. This room contain, plas um, uh, contain chemicals. And it's more close to us than we think. So I think um, we need to be aware that chemicals are everywhere because we need them. Mm -hmm. And like Elliot said earlier, it's the how we manage them that becomes important. And this is where the, in the Ministry of Sustainable Development becomes involved. Okay. Because when we look at the way we're living and how we're able to eat and breathe and, and our economy works, mm -hmm. it's all on a foundation of chemicals. Mm -hmm. And um, when we speak about tomorrow's generation and sustainable development and, and how what we are gonna leave for our children to do the same things that we're able to do today, a lot of it has to do, comes down to the way we use and manage chemicals. And so at the ministry, we're looking to work closely with all stakeholders, including importers, Ministry of Agriculture, through the board and, and, and farm and extension workers, to begin to understand the importance of chemicals and even more importantly, we need them to survive. And because of that, we need to be able to manage them, how we use them, where we store them, ensure that at, at least chemicals enter into our environment. Mm -hmm. Once it gets into the waterways, it gets into the soil, there's no controlling it. Mm -hmm. And these chemicals do have negative effects on our health and our environment. So this is where the ministry comes in and, and where we're seeking to go in terms of protecting our future. So you're working in tandem, your programs and everything? Yes, like that. we must. Um, we cannot do it on our own. Um, it's not possible. We're not a super ministry. Yes, and right. any situation is best tackled as a team. Mm -hmm and engaging our relevant stakeholders and relevant agencies is very key. I just want to highlight the customs department is so important yes. in this whole issue of chemicals, you know. The Opal Customs is, is the first person that has any contact with something that comes into St. Lucia. Sure. So they open a box and they smell and like, okay, I'm not going into that box. Mm -hmm. They smell it. Chemicals mm -hmm. have a smell because mm -hmm. by nature, if That's they right. don't have this smell, we won't know what we're dealing with. Right. So it's very important to have that good relationship with the Customs Department, who also sits on the board to help us to manage our chemicals. Mm -hmm. Mr. Elliot, concerning the your supervision in terms of going into the storehouses and stuff like this, and I mean, if you're at your regular checks. If you come back a second time or a third time, and what you, your, reg, your regulations are not, are not uh, put to, to what you want it to be, mm -hmm. what will happen? Okay, well, we have, uh, we play a regulatory role, but more importantly, the ministry want, wants to facilitate trade mm -hmm. and stimulate production, development, and so on. So we work with people. Um, there are limitations, there are challenges, but we prefer to take a, a more, a, a, a great approach of working with persons that there are challenges with. Mm -hmm. And that is where the um, meetings and trainings come to the fore. Mm -hmm. We are guided by a pesticide act. If these, um, they do not meet certain minimum standards, the act enables us to um, ensure that certain products are, if certain standards are not met, that we can shut down those, those, those. But have you ever gotten to, to that point? No, most persons, anytime we go to them, most persons usually are very willing to comply with the regulations. Mm -hmm. 
because they can be very stiff fines and um, even jail sentences okay. for um, not adhering to the, the Pesticide Act. But here is a situation. I remember some time ago, and to me it has happened many, many times, where somebody wants to bring in a particular chemical, all right, and he goes to the right channel, okay, it comes to the board, whatever the case may be, and it takes a year, two years, three years, four years before that particular chemical is approved. Why is it taking so long? If I can answer that, because um, I sit on the board, the board has a process and which is guided by the Act. Mm -hmm. Before a chemical leaves the country of export to arrive in, to St. Lucia, mm -hmm. the importer in St. Lucia must already first have that chemical or product registered in St. Lucia. Mm -hmm. If it's already registered, then he needs to get a license for it. Mm -hmm. If it's not registered, he needs to get it registered, following which he gets a license for it. Mm -hmm. The reason why sometimes the process takes a long time is because the Important needs to provide certain information, mm -hmm. information on application rates, the label, um, the the various ways it can be used, mm -hmm. the the ingredients, the active ingredients, the inactive ingredients, the effects of those ingredients on the population. Don't forget that we're trying to protect citizens of St. Lucia okay. from things that they don't know about. Okay. We may have, if I can use the example of the, in the um, banana, when the banana industry was blooming in Latin America, there's this, I wouldn't even mention this chemical, mm -hmm. there's this fancy chemical that one of the, the biggest um, fruit companies in the U.S. was using, up, they were applying it onto the banana fields by the air. Mm -hmm. And they were applying it whilst the workers were working, wor no working in the fields. Okay. And those workers, at the end of 10, 15 years, they couldn't have kids. They, they had a lot of problems, mainly fertility, because that drug, that chemical affected fertility. And it took years and years for, for the courts to go through the, because the, the, the workers came together, hired lawyers okay. to sue the uh, company, uh, and they eventually won. Okay. We don't want a situation okay. where a chemical comes into St. Lucia and at 15 years, people eyes start falling out and people can't speak <laughs> and people can't have kids yes, right. and all sorts of negative that's impacts. Okay. So it might seem, you know, a bit of a, a problem for the importers, you. but okay. that's Mr. the reason. Any final words? Because we okay, have well, two seconds. Um, pesticides are uh, uh, all pesticides. There, it's very important that sto to highlight that storage is key, and they should be kept away from easy access to children. There shouldn't be anywhere that you know pets can get to them. Um, you always follow the labels, and there should be a sign saying that you know pesticides are there, and they should keep away. They should be on the safe lock and key, and not anywhere close to water access. Mr. Costa, I would basically like to say that proper use of pesticides could save you, the user, your family, your community, and your environment. So let's all use pesticide wisely. Final words? Yes. Two seconds. Pesticides, we need them, but let's use them in a, in a very safe manner. Great. Yes. Thank you, people, for being here on the show. I know it's a short. Uh, there are a lot more I would like to discuss, but um, we just have half an hour. Yeah. So, viewers, I would like to thank you for viewing the program. Uh, remember, chemicals or pesticides are good if they're used safely. But please, if you do not know how to use them, get information. Speak to your officer out there. Speak to Renegan Company. Speak to anybody who you believe that can give you some guidance. Read, read, and read before use. Very, very, very important. And store wise that can save your life. I am Philip Sidney saying goodbye and see you next time. Agriculture on the move. 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 Thank you.